we remain seated for our first hymn. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen. Oh, can I have a, a louder alleluia than that? Come on, guys, we're still in Easter. I know it's the fifth Sunday of Easter, but alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you, Hilary. I know I can count on you. That's cool. I know, it, has, it does seem as if like, Easter's been going on forever, doesn't it? But we're still in Easter, still celebrating Easter and the risen Lord, which is fantastic. And also, new faces back. Brilliant to see people back in church. So welcome. Welcome those that have returned today to our service. And a big special welcome to my colleague, Jane. Reverend Jane Nash is back in the, in the, in the, in the house. Fantastic. I know that she's going to come and speak to you all in during the notices, so I'm sure she'll have, uh, you know, she'll tell you what's going on and stuff. So that's really good. Um, just to say, for those who have just returned to worship, um, we are offering communion of both kinds, but in tincting the wafer. I will assume that you want both kinds. That you want me to dip. We are dipping. If you want me to dip the wafer. 
please, um, if you don't want me to dip the wafer, please let me know, otherwise I'll assume that everybody wants it dipped. And of course, I must welcome those who are still worshiping, worshiping at home. We miss you lots, but welcome, welcome to you in the comfort of your lounges with your slippers on. I'm well jealous, but anyway. Okay, so let's just take a moment as we come before God. Just silence our hearts and just think of him. We say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you, and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to listen to our choir as they sing the Gloria. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only, be only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, 
Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to listen to our first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, Queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, and whom, may I ask you, does this prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Oh, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way, rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We remain seated to listen to our gradual hymn.
Please stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Talking about pruning... Is anyone else feeling rather pruned of late? Don't get me wrong. I have a blessed life with a wonderful family, uh, an amazing vocational job, and friends, all of which I'm tremendously grateless for. And yet, and yet on the other side of the world, there is the situation in India with the coronavirus killing over 2,000 people daily, and their lack of medical supplies, mainly oxygen, to ease, albeit slightly, the horrific ordeal with which hundreds and thousands of people are struggling. And then there's that tragic accident that happened two days ago in Israel at a religious festival where more than 40 people were crushed to death and, and dozens injured. And here in our own country, um, people struggling still in their lives with the impact of COVID, whether mentally or financially. And then I've heard of so many that have been diagnosed with terminal cancer, only months to live. And the list goes on, doesn't it? The list goes on. And that's the thing. At any given moment, even when things are going relatively well, there are still so many difficult things with which to contend to in, in this life. And it often feels like being pruned. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just feels like being cut. Cut down by life's tragedies, tragedies great or small. Cut down by disappointment or, or despair. Cut down by illness or job or any other circumstances beyond our control cut down and left to wither and die. It's easy to read our gospel passage as one of judgment and threat. But I actually believe the message of our reading today is about promise. Why? Well, it has all to do with context. First, the context of the narrative. Jesus is offering these words to his disciples on the eve of his crucifixion as they're gathered in that upper room having just shared the bread and wine. He knows what is going to happen, both to himself and to his flock, and they do not. They are about to be cut down by his crucifixion and his death 
And he's assuring them that it won't be mere senseless cutting, but that they will survive and even flourish. And the second context we have to note is that of the community for which John the Evangelist is writing. Because by the time they hear these words, they have already been scattered, likely thrown out of their synagogue, and have had plenty of reason to feel like they've been abandoned. But John writes to assure them that while they have indeed been cut, it's pruning for more abundant fruit and a more abundant life. No doubt for the community that was hard to believe as there was precious little evidence available to the disciples or to John's community that they hadn't been abandoned. And no doubt 2,000 years later it's still hard for us to believe as well, especially as so much of life simply tears at us with no evidence that is towards some more fruitful future. But you know, it's amid this uncertainty and distress that Jesus still invites us, actually not just invites but promises us that he will not abandon us but rather will cling to us like a vine clings to a tree so that we endure, so that we persevere and even flourish among these present difficulties. And how do we know that? Well, here's the thing. If Jesus had said, abide in me or else, that would have been a totally different matter. But that's not what he said. Abide in me as I abide in you. That's what Jesus says. Abide in me as I abide in you. This is more than just good advice. So much more than an invitation. This is a promise that no matter what happens, Jesus will be with us. That no matter what happens, Jesus will hold on to us. And no matter what happens, God in Jesus will bring all things to a good end. Which is not to say, by the way, that everything happens for a reason. Rather, it's to say that no matter what happens, we have God's promise in Jesus to work for good. Keep that in mind. After all, these words are said just before Jesus goes to the cross. And I would argue that the cross was not simply a part of some larger plan, but rather the chief example of God's commitment to wrestle life and hope from the very place that seems most devoid of life and hope. Not everyone feels that way, I know. There have been countless voices over the centuries that argue that the cross is some kind of mechanism by which God finds a way to forgive us despite how wretched we are. Frankly, I think most of that theologizing is a pile of pious rubbish meant to help us understand and even domesticate something that is actually beyond our control. If the cross means anything, I think it means that God chose not to sit back in heaven, removed from the pain of our mortal, free and difficult life in this world, but rather came in Christ to be joined to it, to be joined to the ups and the downs, to be joined to the hopes and disappointments, the frailties and faults of our life in this world. And why? So that we would know of God's unending commitment to us. The cross wasn't the instrument that made it possible for God to love us. The cross is evidence and testimony to just how much God already loved us and God's promise to be with us through all things. Just so, the resurrection is the promise that no matter how much tragedy we endure, these hardships will not have the last word. Life is tough and no one is exempt.
from some form of hardship in their lives. You only have to look back at the last year that we've all been through. COVID has impacted on our lives in one form or another, and it's been totally rubbish, absolutely rubbish. But wouldn't it help us to know that all the suffering we endure, all the suffering we have endured and that we will endure is not wasteful cutting, but pruning for a more abundant future. And that no matter what, Jesus will never abandon us. Amen. We stand to affirm our faith in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, whom with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Please be seated. God of love, may we abide in your presence and so abide in your love. As we freely receive your love, let us freely share with others all that you have given to us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Father of all, we pray for your church. We pray that it may be a caring, a loving and accepting church. We pray for the outreach of your church, that it may seek out the needy, that it may seek out the outcasts and the rejected. May love be revealed in action. And this day we pray for our three beneficed churches and ask that you may bless them as they slowly return to normal services and events. Lord, may we be as welcoming as Jesus was. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we come with sorrow for all who have been denied freedom or peace. We pray for places where communities have been destroyed, communities where families have been divided or separated. 
and we pray for all children who have lost contact with their parents. We remember all who seek to heal that which divides. And Father, we continue to pray for India in their fight against COVID. Thinking of the thousands and thousands of victims and praying for the families in this country with the relatives in India. We lift them all to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for areas where people can exercise their talents, where people are free to think and to act without hindrance. We pray for all who are enriching our world with their gifts. And Lord, we pray for our families and friends, giving you thanks for the joy of being able to meet with them once more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we think of all whose lives have been marred by their past. For lives destroyed by bad memories, hatred, guilt or resentment. We think of all those who are weary of life, those who are tired of serving others. In the power of the risen Lord, we ask for renewal, refreshment and restoration. We pray for all those who are on our prayer list and for those who choose to remain anonymous from us, but not from you, Lord. And in a moment of silence, let us name in our hearts all those we know of in need of our prayers this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life and love, we praise you for all who have borne fruit in your service, for all who have forwarded your kingdom, and for all who have shared their love and goodness. We pray for all our loved ones departed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand for the peace? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace in those new mysterious ways. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you.
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. body and blood of Christ. Amen. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. body and blood of Christ. Amen. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. The 
of your blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We're now going to listen to our closing hymn.
Jane, come on down. It would have been even weirder to sing to my own organ music. Um, it is fantastic to be back. It really, really is. But it is also very strange. Um, I've been away from you for nearly 14 months. Before that, I was only an authorised minister with you for less than two years. The reason I mention this is because right at this moment, I'm having a huge amount of trouble just getting my children and my grandchildren's names right. <laughs> so please, will you be very graceful and forgiving of me over this next few months as I settle back in? It is so fantastic to see all the faces, but I have not managed to sit there in my pew this morning and name you all yet. <laughs> I'll work on it with some help from Sally and, and you when I, when I get stuck. Um, it is fantastic to be back. I would love to say I come bouncing back with stacks of energy. The truth is I've been working 70 plus hours a week for 14 months without a single day off. I have not been worshipping with you but I have prepared and led worship for my family every single Sunday since lockdown began. So it is absolutely fantastic to be back with you. I will slowly and carefully get back into my proper ministry among you, but please be patient with me and please give me time because I come back to you tired and in need of some sustenance from all of you and from the worship in this place. So for the rest of this month, I will just be sitting in a pew on Sunday. But it is great to be back. Thank you. We've missed you, Jane. <laughs> it's incredible to think just how many months, though, isn't it? That is quite scary. That's a whole chunk of our lives, isn't it, really? Yeah. Pew's News. Um, you know, this is the month where we can slowly now come out of, you know, not totally out of restrictions, but, you know, rhubarb cafe is back. Um, we've also got the uh, May craft market that Natalie has been organizing. And can I say, she's doing an, an amazing job. She's had so many offers from the community to help as well as church, which is just fab, isn't it, that we can bridge that gap between us and the community. There is no gap, I don't think. I think now we're just one big community, aren't we? It can be called church, it can be called community, but it's fantastic. So, you know, a big shout out. If you are able to help Natalie, I will be here as well. Um, but if you are able to help, please do get in touch with her. You will have noticed also that um, Louise, bless her, is doing a summer fete we are going to make it smaller than normal because I think this is all about celebrating just being back with each other, isn't it? It's going to be weird. I mean, all now there's, you know, there's distance between you. I don't know whether you've been watching the news about that rave up in Liverpool. You know, I mean, to see so many people together was quite scary, wasn't it? And it's, you start to, like, can I breathe properly? So, you know, we're going to do it. People are going to naturally socially distance, I think, anyway. But by July, um, we will. And there will be a dog show as well. I'll get my dog show in. So, uh, you know, only dogs, no other animals, please. Um, yeah, so we're slowly coming back, aren't we? And it's just fantastic. Is there anything else that anybody has to share with each other? No? Brilliant. Well done. So shall we stand for the final blessing? The Lord be with you. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.